Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Good gracious. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here, the Eric Erickson Show. The phone number, 877-973-7425. We'll be a little loose with the phone call restrictions today. You know, yesterday I said that uh, the federal government affects your life on a daily basis less than everyone else. There's one area where it affects you, the economy. Boy, is it affecting you on the economy. Uh, It is just not good. Here's Rick Santelli. Year over year, these are the Moneyball numbers. Year over year headline, 8.6. 8.6, a new cycle high usurping March, which was 8.5. That was the highest since 1981. Now, 8.6 continues to be the highest since 81 because uh, the comp there is 8.9 to 11.8%. And if we look at year over year core, also hotter than expectations, up 6%, following 6.2%, high watermark there, 65 and that was in March, and that was the highest since 1982. But remember, even at 6%, uh, it, coming down from uh, the high watermark of 6.5, that standalone is still the highest since 1982. So these are super stubborn numbers. Yep. They are. Now, listen, I watched the January 6th committee hearing last night so that you did not have to. And we will get into that. And if you turned on the TV this morning, if you weren't watching Fox, that was the big story. This is actually the big story. Inflation is actually the big story. Here's a little more Rick Santelli. And our panel, our esteemed panel, has lots of brain power there, and they go in lots of categories, Joe, as to why inflation's here, the all of the above mention. I will say that out of all the all the above, energy, energy, energy. And you know, there's so many comments here about, oh, the administration can only do so much. You know what? We all said that about the Fed. And then there's this thing called forward guidance. So the Fed gets the market to do things long before it takes action by telling them what's in their head, what lies down the road. What was the forward guidance with this administration on energy? We know the answer. Maybe they can't get things to happen faster, but by giving positive forward guidance, by not closing pipelines, by not talking pre-election about how much they don't like fossil fuel, maybe things would have turned out a bit different. Maybe they would have. Uh, Let me give you the overall perspective here. Groceries are up 11.9%. That's the biggest increase since 1979. Chicken is up 17.4%. That's the largest ever. You got pen and paper handy? Let Let me start this again for you. So the overall inflation is up 8.6%. That's the highest inflation we've seen since 1981. So the last two months was the highest inflation we'd seen since 1982. We're now at the highest inflation seen since 1981. Grocery prices overall up 11.9% year over year, the biggest increase since 1979. Chicken prices, poultry up 17.4%, the largest increase ever. Restaurant prices up 9%, the largest increase ever. Electricity up 12%, the largest increase since 2006. Rent is up 5.2%, the largest since 1987. Airfare up 37.8%, the largest since 1980. The services sector costs up 5.4%, the largest since 1990. And here's the big one, fuel oil. Fuel oil up 107%, the largest ever. So groceries up 11, chicken up 17, restaurants up 9, electricity 12, rent 5, airfare 38, services 6, fuel oil up 107. Fuel oil has caused the prices of everything else to go up. So the fix is very easy here if you wish to do it, and that is Open American Oil Reserves. Open Anwar. Open the Arctic. Open federal land. 
in the West. Open the Gulf of Mexico. Provide the steel. Get rid of steel tariffs so it can come in cheap so that oil companies can produce oil and lower inflation, all of the prices. The problem is that the Biden administration and the media together can't do this. And this is the most frustrating thing. As an interested observer who's been in and out of the media for a number of years, the most frustrating thing here is to watch members of the press and the Democrats work hand in glove on the January 6th commission and on this. It's more noticeable on that because of the coverage. But what's happening is you don't see the coverage in the press that the Democrats could do something. You don't see coverage in the press that the Democrats could begin to reduce inflation by lowering energy prices. You do not see the press commenting on the fact that you could expand American domestic energy production and begin to fight inflation that way instead of having the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, driving up other costs. You could do it through the release of American energy production. But the media will not talk about it because they have bought into the climate change agenda just as much as the Democrats have. And yet that is the solution. When fuel oil is up 107% year over year, biggest increase ever. If you produce more fuel oil, you begin to lower all the other prices. Friend of mine, sister, sent him a picture in Northern California, diesel prices in Northern California, $7.29 for diesel. And she tells him that actually that's a 40 cent overnight increase. They're on track for $9 a gallon for diesel by July in California. And because of the fuel increase, he says his sister told her hay broker that all the hay is jumping a minimum 30% per bale. So that means livestock is going to go up. Beef is going to go up. A bale of hay for livestock is already $18 a barrel or $18 a bale. It's going to go up 30% because of fuel oil prices. In 2011, $12 a bale was considered expensive. It's already at 18 and it's going to go up. That's going to drive up beef prices poultry prices. Inflation's not over. In fact, the Biden administration is trying to tell people that actually things are, we're going to start seeing improvement from here on out. Most economists are saying, no, we're not because fuel oil prices keep going up. The most frustrating, angering thing about this is that it is so obvious what the solution is. And yet the Democrats have so bought into climate change that they want you to pay these high prices. It is a choice at this point on their part. It is a willful, intentional choice on the part of the Democrats to continue to pay these exorbitant prices for gas. And those exorbitant prices for gas are having a spillover effect so that they're causing every other price to go up. If they would like to fix the problem, if they would like to win the election, expand oil and gas production in the country. It's not that hard. Yes, it would take time, but it's not that hard to begin. And yet the Biden administration nor the media will talk about that because to do so would be to betray the environmentalists in in their myths who are concerned that within 10 years we're going to destroy the planet. And they would rather hitch a ride to that mythology than actually reduce prices for the American consumer. Hell is coming for them in the form of voters in November. The January 6th committee does not matter compared to this. You think I'm joking? Here is Brian Deese. He was on with Jim Cramer on CNBC talking about inflation. Listen to Jim Cramer going after Brian Deese. He's the head of the National Economic Council for the president on oil. You know what? You haven't done it. You haven't just said, okay, listen, guys in the Permian, oil's at 120. We know that you're returning a lot of money to your shareholders. We need you to do what's right. In return, we know you need pipe. We know that natural gas would come down dramatically if they had enough pipe. I love your number, but your number's about the number amount of pipe. Even if we just decide that we can keep the price of oil down by actually exporting it and get oil down in the future, you know, it's a win for you. But what, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being seen with guys who are involved with fossil fuel? 
Are you afraid of the president going to Permian rather than Saudi Arabia? Come on, man. Come on. You know the real. What? You know the real. What? You know what has what? to be done. And and you know what he wanted to do? So he was with um, um, Mark Gurman. Uh, not Mark Gurman. Um, what's his name from uh, CNBC? Talking about, is it Gurman? Uh, on talking about inflation. And his spin is, yet again, to blame Putin. Oh, if I can get this audio to load. I just dropped a big file on the internet. And suddenly my internet crashed. Of course it happens that way. That's fine. His point, Brian Deese, the White House National Economic Council advisor, was that it's all about Vladimir Putin. It's not about them. It's David, but as part of that transition, people may need to get accustomed to higher prices overall. Isn't that just a simple fact? I, look, it, before Putin began amassing troops at the border, the price of gas in the United States, the average price of gas in the United States, was about a hundred, a dollar seventy-five less than it is today. And in real terms, it was lower than the average for the past decade. So, uh, so if you really isolate what's going on here, it's because Vladimir Putin decided to take on this irresponsible war, and we've created. Uh, all of these perturbations in the global energy markets. So yes, we have to deal with that. And yes, we have to stand with Ukraine and we need to fight his aggression. And yes, that creates serious global challenges in our energy market. But I don't think we should confuse that with the transition that the market is driving and that we can accelerate while actually lowering costs for consumers. I mean, the- you, you got that. Uh, they want the, the transition to green power, the transition to battery powered cars is what he's talking about. The thing that people often miss out is that if we provided technology neutral long term incentives to produce lower cost, cleaner energy in the United States. American utility companies would go out and lower people's utility bills. If Congress passed that legislation, American utility companies would actually lower utility bills. Okay, let's stop right here. Brian Deese, the chairman of the National Economic Council for President Biden, wants Congress to spend more money subsidizing the transition to clean energy. Uh, Congress spending money has caused our inflation already. Congress spending too much money. That and their regulation and cramping down, clamping down on energy in this country, on oil production in this country, making themselves hostile to oil production in this country. This is the most infuriating, maddening thing here is just as the press is working with the president hand in glove to vilify Republicans over January 6th, they're doing the same thing to avoid telling the truth to the American people that we have massive oil reserves in this country, and if we release them, we would lower prices. The fuel oil price is up 107% year over year, the largest increase in American history. You can blame Vladimir Putin all you want, but you have the solution under your your own ground, Democrats. The fact that you won't do it and the media won't hold you accountable for it is why the American people hate all your guts. The press and the Democrats together, the American people hate you because they see you collaborating together against them. You're not going to get the American people to care about January 6th on an empty stomach and an empty wallet and an empty gas tank. And that's what you've given them because you have enough oil under the ground in the United States today to lower the prices. And you refuse because you're beholden to a bunch of academic white elites who are scared to death the world is going to end in in years, you've bought into the cult of the environment and you're screwing the American people as a result. And you and the press and you and the Democratic Party are working together to do it, which is why the American people will deliver you hell on earth in November. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, more importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, you can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, 
You can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities LLC. Member Finn Recipic. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, happy to have you today. And I want to remind you, if you text the word show to 33777, uh, get the podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, all the links are there, but also sign up for the daily email that I send out. Uh, you get the show notes. I didn't send them out today. I was getting all the, the big bandage off my hand and uh, it took forever. So I, I didn't get a chance to do the show notes today. I'm, I'm, I'm on minimal show prep. Well, the, the show you're getting today is the show of all the stuff that's been rattling around in my head and the breaking news because I did not outline a show today. This is all free form. Um, seriously, I, but uh, you can generally get the show notes. I will be sending out some video clips from the show later to the subscribers. So text show to 33777. Let's go to the phone. Susan, you're going to be up first. Welcome. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Uh, in addition to helping the U.S. economy, if we opened up our oil and natural gas again, I mean, we could accomplish several things in Europe in that a lot of European countries, as you know, are, have been buying and been dependent on, especially Germany, um, Russian oil and natural gas. Well, if we could fill that void, you know, we'd look like the good guys because the Russians are, are jerking their chain. Um, So we'd look like the good guys, and we'd give them a good deal, and we'd open up another market to ourselves again. But also, too, it could shorten the war because we'd be slowly choking out more. If Russia has lots of oil to sell and nobody's buying it, um, you know, that's going to hurt their war effort because they're not going to have any money coming in. They don't have any other products, really, to sell on the world market. You know, this is a point that... that we, we could undermine Russia by by opening our oil reserves, lowering the price of oil, uh, which undermines the amount of money flowing into Russia. I, 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 again, it, it's right. another no-brainer. Yeah, well, well, they are no-brainers in that White House. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that's an excellent point, Susan. Thank you very much. Have a have a good weekend. Um, yeah, listen, we could do this, but they can't. They can't bring themselves to do it, and that's the most infuriating thing. They cannot bring themselves to acknowledge that we have the resources right under our feet to solve this problem. They are too beholden to the environmentalists to do that. They are too beholden to the people who think the world is coming to an end for them to be able to do anything. Meanwhile, the world is coming to an end for a significant number of Americans who frankly do not have the money in order to be able to to pay for gas right now. I mean, people are on hard times because of this administration. Listen to this. Uh, This is an interview uh, with Joyce on CNN. Well, let me rearrange the audio here now that I've built all that up. This, again, Joyce on CNN. The prices. Seventy-two year old Joyce Silla has seen inflation eat through her fixed income, seventeen hundred dollars a month of social security. What has that done to your savings? It's gone. It's depleted. No savings. That's it. And if, if I can make it from one month to the other month, that's good. She was the assistant director of housekeeping at a large DC hotel before retiring ten years ago. Now a widow, she's relying on food banks for the first time and watching her power bills pile up. It's not a good feeling. I know I worked. I didn't take shortcuts. While inflation is hitting most Americans, many retired seniors face an added squeeze. For 10 million of them, Social Security, on average just over $1,600 a month, is at least 90% of their income. 
and inflation is far outpacing this year's cost of living increase on those benefits, though it was the biggest raise in 39 years. This is Joe Biden's America, not Donald Trump's America. You cannot get Americans to care about what happened on January 6th when they're too busy worrying about making ends meet when they weren't when Donald Trump was president of the United States. That's the basic equation the Democrats have to deal with. And what's so crazy is that it's such an easy thing for them to do. Pump more American oil. And they can't. They won't. They will not do that. They make every excuse in the world. They say it'll take time. If it takes all that time, why did Biden release oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? Still had to be refined. It still took time. Doing so still lowered the price of oil temporarily. Why? They are out of ideas and they can't bring themselves to do the one thing that would actually fix the problem. Hi there, it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I want to get to your phone calls. Before I do, though, uh, my buddy Greg texted me. He says, why don't the Democrats drill? What's the actual effing reason? And he actually did do F apostrophe in. <laughs> uh, he meant freaking. Um, what, what is the actual reason? I, I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be flippant. The Democrats truly and genuinely believe, whether you think it or not, they truly genuinely believe the world is going to come to, or at least humanity is going to come to an end. That we are on the verge of a tipping point. And if we tip over Guam, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. If we tip over the planet, because of the release of more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, we will have uncontrollable greenhouse gases and we will wind up like Venus, a hothouse planet of sulfuric acid clouds. That sounds dramatic, but that's the actual truth. The Democrats are now run by an elite and funded by a base of voters who believe that we are destroying the planet. And the fossil fuel industry is chief culprit in doing so. And the only way to stop it is to stop extracting coal, oil, and natural gas. Though natural gas reduces uh, climate emissions, it's still considered a fossil fuel and therefore is bad and does not do as much to improve the planet as solar power and wind. And we must all convert to battery-powered cars. This literally is the answer. I know you want some grand conspiracy. I know you want some deeper thinking here, but this is actually it. The Democrats are beholden to an environmental radical elite who believe the world is going to end if we extract more oil. So they would much rather prop up third world dictatorial regimes like Maduro in Venezuela and get their oil than produce more oil in this country. Their thinking is that if they produce more oil in this country, that they will inspire an industry in this country. And it will be too difficult in the future to shut it back down. So better to let it continue to decline now than build it up and have an influential group of constituents of the future in parts of the country who refuse to let it wind down. The Democrats are screwing you now because they've convinced themselves they're saving you later. You, meanwhile, are worried about the here and now, not the 10 years from now, when Democrats say the world will not exist if we go further with this. But they've been saying we've got 10 years to save the planet for about 40 years. That's the problem. That's the Democrats' ultimate problem. And that's why hell is coming for them in November. Now, to the phones. Tom, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. You're right on the money here. Um, all they have to do is lower the fuel prices and they better do it pretty quick. Uh, I am a owner operator in the trucking industry. I actually run from Port of Savannah up here to the Atlanta area and back. All of the produce, everything in this country moves by truck. Mm -hmm. Where do they think all the, where do they think all the food comes from? California, Washington, right. Oregon. 
Oh, it, it, it's That's fascinating to me. All they have to, to do me. is yeah. lower the fuel prices. It, it is. It's fascinating to me, uh, Tom, that they are so dogmatically convinced that they got to save the planet and they got to save the planet by stopping you from being able to do what you're doing. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely a nonsensical that they will not produce more oil. Uh, you're, you're talking about the truck driving. So you're going to Savannah for those who are listening outside of Georgia, the port of Savannah is one of the fastest growing ports in the country because it's taken a lot of the spillover from the long beach port in California. Ships are coming through the Panama canal to Jacksonville, Savannah, and the like, uh, and Charleston, where the ports aren't backed up. And, but there's still a ton of stuff coming from California, and guys like Tom are having to drive all over delivering cargo, and you're dealing with it on a regular basis. Tom, just curious, how much does it take you to fill up? I filled up uh, last night. It was $750. Holy. Oh, wow. I nearly said a bad word on radio. Good gracious. Wow. That everybody's paying because I, I don't pay that. I pass that right on them through to everybody else. Holy um, cow. That's what people need to understand. And and it's not only, you know, imports. A lot of the containers we're hauling are coming from different parts of the country, uh, like New England states. A lot of containers are getting put on ships there and sent by ship down and get offloaded again. And put on a chassis, and, and it comes down here. Uh, that's that's kind of how we d- deal with the trucker shortage. <laughs> Gosh, a mighty wow, man! Thanks, Tom, for calling in on that. Wow, that's a that's a lot of money, and all that is being passed on, passed on to you and me. Holy cow! Um, that that you know. One of the things Donald Trump did when he was president is he finally decided to expand into Anwar. Uh, Barack Obama, George Bush had approved it. Barack Obama stopped it. Uh, Donald Trump did it, and not only did it, he did it early within his administration. But then President Biden has come in and put a hold on the project. Uh, so I, I, I give you this visual again. This is an accurate. It really actually is an accurate. I'm not making this up. No BS on my part here. If you imagine a football field. That football field represents the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, Anwar. Now, if you put a postage stamp, you know, your standard uh, first-class postage stamp, set that on the football field in the corner near the edge. That's the footprint of the drilling in Anwar, that postage stamp. That gives you the perspective, a postage, uh, a post, uh, postage stamp on a football field. The football field is Anwar. The postage stamp is where the drilling would be. And the Democrats said it was too bad for the environment. We couldn't do it. Uh, Donald Trump said do it, expanded it. Uh, they built up the infrastructure for it. The infrastructure is there. The pipelines are there. And then Biden came in before they could get the oil flow in and said, nope, 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 stop. Stopped with the Keystone XL. They even stopped a, um, a natural gas pipeline through Appalachia. They've done all of those things, all of those things. Now, uh, President Biden is going to speak at 145 about inflation. It's going to be interesting to see. I may cover that live and talk over him just because Uh, somebody's got to do it. It, This this is we we got a problem here. We got a problem with uh, inflation. The solutions are not that hard. The other thing the Democrats need to do is just stop spending. Larry Summers warned them if they spent too much that they would get inflation. Everything Larry Summers said was right. Everything Larry Summers said would happen, happened. And the Democrats are blaming Vladimir Putin. They're blaming everybody but themselves. When everyone warns you something's going to happen and it happens, and then you deny knowledge of it, you don't come across credible. And that's where we are with the Democrats right now. Now, how is this shaping up politically for the Democrats? If, if you're a Democrat, you need to listen to Harry Enten. Harry Enten, he's CNN's political guru. Listen to this guy. He was on CNN talking about this late yesterday. I took the best Republican positions on the generic congressional ballot at this point in midterm cycles since 1938, that generic ballot basically has 
uh, would you vote for the generic Republican or generic Democrat in your district? And guess what? Since 1938, the Republican two-point lead on the generic congressional ballot is the best position for Republicans at this point in any midterm cycle in over 80 years. It beats 2010 when Republicans were up a point. It beats 14, 2002, 1998, where Democrats led by a point. And in all of those four prior examples that make this list of the top five, look at that. Who won a majority? It was the Republicans who won a majority. Now, of course, the election is not being held tomorrow, and we'll see. Sometimes history isn't always prologue. But, but my estimate for the 2023 House makeup, if the election were held today, which again, it isn't, we still have five months, five months from tomorrow, would be Republicans 236 seats to 241 seats, Democrats 194 to 199. That's based off of a formula of seat to seat race ratings from both the Cook Political Report and Inside Elections. Brutal, brutal. Charlie made a point. I got to give Charlie the point because every once in a while, Charlie comes up with a good point that I haven't thought about in a while and and puts it back into my head. Democrats were warned about inflation. Larry Summers warned the Democrats about inflation before they passed their massive uh, rescue overhaul. And by the way, Secretary Janet Yellen of the Treasury Department, whose job used to be at the Federal Reserve to worry about inflation, says she would not have done anything differently. They should have done something differently because they were warned by Larry Summers, who used to be a, an economic advisor for Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, that if they did this, they would have massive inflation. And they've got exactly what Larry Summers warned about. Your massive spending led to inflation. It's why blaming Russia does no good because everyone knows they got blamed and they pretend they never were warned. They never had knowledge of it. Everybody knows they were warned. Everybody remembers Larry Summers doing this. It's just like with Afghanistan. They were warned what the fallout would be if they went through with their plan. They were warned by generals. They were warned by people in Afghanistan. They were warned by European allies, and the Biden administration did it anyway. When historians look back on this administration and the four years, maybe it lasts four years now, on the four years it lasts, that's going to be one of the remarkable things I think historians notice, how often this administration was warned by their partners and allies not to do something, and dogmatically, insistently, pig-headedly, they did it anyway and got exactly the results everyone warned them would happen, and then they played naive and said, what? We were never told this. It's not our fault. It's Vladimir Putin's fault. It's, it's somebody else's fault. It's Donald Trump's fault. They can't blame Donald Trump for this when they're the ones who got warned. Larry Summers warned them about inflation. Everybody warned them about Afghanistan. But insistently, dogmatically, they did it anyway. All of these situations, they've done all of these things. They've been warned repeatedly what would happen. The warnings come true, and they act naive and say, what? We were never told. We, we have no idea. It's got to be somebody else's fault. It can't be our fault. At some point, if this administration, like the last, just operated with a basic sense of humility, Maybe they wouldn't keep falling for this over and over again. I mean, they self-sabotage. I, I, even Donald Trump did not self-sabotage as much as Joe Biden and his administration self-sabotage. It's no wonder that Joe Biden's popularity is less than Donald Trump's. Joe Biden is right now the least popular president to ever inhabit the Oval Office. And that's saying something. And he doesn't like it. And he thinks that people should love him and give him credit. Mr. President, it's really hard to give you credit when people are at the pump realizing they've never paid for gas this high. When people can't go to the grocery store and find basic items. And when they do find them, they're too expensive and they can't make ends meet. You're having retirees have to go on welfare and food stamp programs and rely on food banks. And they've never even had to do that when Jimmy Carter was president. And they're having to do it now. And you and your administration were warned. And the only thing you can do is 
says, not us. It's not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's Putin's fault. No, it's your fault. You did this just like with Afghanistan. Those soldiers would have never died but for your arrogance and dogmatic insistence that you had to evacuate Afghanistan the way you did. And now Americans are starving because, again, dogmatically and with a ton of arrogance, you decided to do what you did. And you were warned. You were warned repeatedly. You were warned by your own allies, and you played deaf to all of it. And now you are reaping the whirlwind, to quote Chuck Schumer. One of the organizations that helping stir the whirlwind up against the Democrats is Patriot Mobile. Thank goodness they're out there. They take a portion of their profits. They're a cell phone company. And they take a portion of the profits you help generate by being a customer, and they fund the conservative movement. They fund conservative candidates and causes, the Second Amendment, the pro-life cause, veterans and first responders. It's what they do. It's the way they were designed. And if you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, you can do business with them and get free activation with my name. Don't take my word for their service. Go look on their website. You see the detail map down to your house. They can show you the quality of service you're gonna get from 5G to voice, data, you name it. I use them. I get them in rural Georgia. I got them off the coast when I was on a boat in the Atlantic the other day uh, with the cell towers they use. Got great signal about a mile off from the coast still. And you can too with Patriot Mobile. You can also call them. They have 100% U.S. based customer service. You go to 972 Patriot. That's 972 Patriot. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation. You work with a great company and they give you great discounts being a customer. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Hi there, it is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425 should you wish to be on the program. You know, I I should give you a thumb update, I guess. I, I went and got the, the big heavy bandage off of it, uh, which is good. And now I've got this nice little cotton mesh thing on. So they had to take everything off except, uh, you know, I'm on blood thinner. This is not to gross anyone out. I'm on blood thinner. And so they had to put on the special gauze that absorbs the blood and then hardens uh, and kind of coagulate, assists in the coagulation process. Such a gross word, isn't it? Coagulation. Um, But so that falls off on its own. It's kind of like a second skin and it falls off on its own. So I had to see it. If you really want to see it, I did put up a picture on Instagram. E.W. Erickson on Instagram. You should follow me there anyway. But it's the big one. It says, don't swipe unless you want to see pictures of my gross thumb. I had to do that because Philip, who works for me, if he saw it, he'd pass out. Uh, In fact, it's kind of funny. So he and his dad were fishing a while back, and his dad got a hook, got hooked. And when Philip saw the blood, he kind of, well, went under. And I was telling this to the doctor, and the doctor says, I think I remember them. (laughs) more worried about him passing out than his dad getting hooked um so yeah uh, i had to i had to make sure that it's not visible for people otherwise you know facebook and, and instagram they also give the sensitive image warning and i don't want to i don't want to disturb people with a sensitive image warning in any event all right i had thought i did think that we would be able to get to the uh january 6th stuff this hour clearly not When we come back, I'll take your phone calls, but I will talk about the January 6th stuff as well and and tie it into uh, more and more stories of Democrats saying it's time to move on from Joe Biden. Before that, though, keep in mind, record high inflation today. Gas, fuel oil prices, the highest year-over-year increase in American history. And here is Janet Yellen, Secretary of the Treasury. Transitory to describe the path of inflation was a mistake, but yesterday I asked her, what lessons she thought she learned then and what she would have done differently now that things have turned out the other way. I wouldn't do it differently. I um, was very supportive of the American Rescue Plan. I recognize that there are all kinds of risks that the United States faced when President Biden took office. And um, things can always Uh, happen that you don't expect. The world's very uncertain. And my assessment was that the biggest risk the United States faced is unemployment was very high. Unemployment was very high, but she wouldn't do anything over again. That's not the reassuring words you want from the trust from the Treasury Secretary. She also, by the way, says we're not going to have a recession. 
Uh, more and more outside groups, including J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Credit Suisse, um, uh, Deutsche Bank, they're saying we're headed for a recession. I'll tell you what's going to happen. We're going to go into recession. Biden's not going to run again, and the Republicans are going to wipe out the Democrats in 2024. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.